Okay, YouTubers, <clears throat> this is a request I had. I threw a quick drawing up on uh, one of my videos of a possible greenhouse, and a guy asked me for a little more detail, a little bit of a sort of a uh, schematic on it, or a blueprint on it. I uh, teach construction technology, um, so I thought I'd maybe throw some of this, up. and I also live in a uh, straw well house. So I thought I'd throw some of this out to show you something. Some of these ideas or concepts. And again, these are greenhouse options, right? You can't, it's hard to say that there is no one best design. There's no one best design because there's uh, all these different people in all these different areas. And each person with their time, with their uh, resources they have available, there's a best for them and their area and their climate and there's the best for others so you can see that i've uh, i've got a straw bale wall here and that would obviously be to the north side now how do you build a straw bale wall and how would you set up a footer and how would you do that cheaply for a greenhouse well i've made a, a detailed drawing here of your straw wall now you see that this blue here represents the gravel the gravel footer so instead of having to pay a concrete truck or mix that concrete by hand you can dig you a ditch you can tamp that gravel in there uh, two three inches at a time with a tamper and pack it once you get it packed up to ground level these two red blocks here they represent a railroad tie and those railroad ties will be set the width of that straw bale apart. Now the reason you set that bale up on a railroad tie or a concrete block or anything you'd like to use down through there is to keep that bale from up off the ground to keep from it soaking up moisture. And also if any moisture ever did enter that wall, it'll go down in this area that's left open between the two and come down into this and drain away from your wall. <clears throat> now, obviously, as you stack that straw bale, that red line in the center represents rebar that you would give it strength, okay? So that's how you would do a cheap, easy footer. Now you can do footers for outbuildings like that with compacted gravel. It's been done a long time. It's not anything new at all. Uh, so how do you put the top plate on there? I've got a top plate. This here is representing a top plate with a T or an angle or a bolt or just an L bin in it. And then that rebar is drove down inside those straw bales. And then this blue represents your chicken wire that would go on both sides. And these are the little nails that you would pin it in on each side. So once you put your footer up on top of there and you stack your bales up, pin it with your rebar, you put your chicken wire on it, and then you earth and plaster that wall. Now, a good earth plaster mix is one part clay, two parts sand, and cut straw for the first layer. And if you want a good smooth layer, you use it on the second. Uh, you, on the second layer, you don't put any cut straw in it. You let it go ahead and uh, uh, be smooth. Now let's go over some details here. One thing I would do is I would put this span of this plastic here. I would put it the span equal to the width of the plastic roll that I could get from Home Depot or Lowe's. 10 or 12 foot would be a great span there. Remember to put it on the appropriate angle, right? And then also you can see I did a raised bed in order to lower it, raise it up to with even this bale here so I could get the light to grow. Now I also put a water catch here so the water would come down and catch it. Now you could put a bed there that that would water if you've got a high water need plant right there. Or you can do a water catch trough all the way across there if you've got livestock or something else in that area. Now <clears throat> the sun will come through and heat this dirt in this raised bed. This black dirt has got the right color and it's got the right substance, which is water, we've been talking about, to retain that heat. That heat will come up, hit that plastic, and roll up. And you'll see that I put a roof in here, and I put two by six up here for this roof. Now I hung it over in the back so the water wouldn't get into my straw bale, and I hung it over in the front, and that overhang is not right, and you have to calculate that out. But you see that I put this little knee wall drop here. This provides this pocket in here for that heat to get up in there and swirl around. Another thing that that knee wall does is it allows, if you see it on a front view, right, these would represent windows across the front, which would be able to be opened in the summertime to help regulate heat. And they're in the high spot of the greenhouse, so all the heat naturally rolls to right there anyway, and so that really lets that heat out. Now, not only does it naturally roll that that uh, that that heat out anyway or it's at the right it's at the right location to roll it out 
is what I'm trying to say. It's at the highest point. But at this 2x6 is also, you see I got insulation up in there. You want insulation, you want that 2x6 full, if you can afford to go 2x10s, go 2x10s and, and, and insulate the hell out of that because that's going to make the biggest difference. Right? And that knee wall, and then you would need a support across there every four to eight foot, depending on what kind of load you're going to put on top. And of course you want the path, this is the door, so you'd go in this end and walk straight down the end of that and there would be the barrels on the right hand side with grow boxes and a raised bed on the left hand and a path right down the center, right? And then right in the center you have your stove outcrop, right? Well, if you was viewing it to, to the back, you would go to the center, the C with a line through it represents center, and the stove outcrop would be right in the center. That way, the central location of the stove would distribute the heat as, as best as possible. Now, that stove could be plumbed to these barrels if you so chose, right? Not a, it wouldn't be a big problem at all to do that, okay? Uh, also, you'll see that I've got a gutter back and just be one straight line of gutter for water catch on the back. Be another way to capture water off of that. Uh, one other uh, heating option would be uh, so this is an end view. So if you're doing that end, and, and you can do this end out of straw, you can do it out of wood. If you framed your ends out of wood, you can put tin up a couple layers, a couple rows thick. And when you put that tin up there, you can pile your compost, right? You can pile your compost up against that tin. And that compost will give off heat as you wet it, especially if you take your, uh, your uh, water here and you are wetting that compost, it'll put off that heat and help heat that greenhouse. A lot of guys are using that uh, uh, compost to heat hot water. You'll see them using uh, to heat greenhouses, right? So uh, this is, this is, you know, this is not just a, uh, it, this can also serve as a couple different things. Uh, in the summertime, you can take that plastic off of this span off and still use it as a grow bed. In fact, you can even put, if you're getting too much sun and you want to dry some shaded, uh, some shaded you can put the uh, screen over that to reduce the uh, sun exposure in here. Uh, not only that, but uh, if you, uh, this plastic here, if you leave it up, then there's a few more options you've got for that greenhouse. And uh, it's a greenhouse. If you leave the plastic up and the plants are down, uh, in the summertime, and you're not going in, in the summertime, you could do a smokehouse in there. And if you had shelves in there, you could do a de dehydrator. And also through the summertime, or where you don't have any plants, you also want to be working your worm beds. So on a front view here, you see that uh, I've, I'd have my beds just right above my, even with my straw bale low in the front for that bed. And then there's my beds up on my 55 gallon drums in the back for my taller plants. Now, some of these plants up front here, you could actually grow and put supports underneath this and grow them up the lighted area. You know, like anything that would run like cucumbers or pole beans or whatever you want to do, you could, it could actually run up there. Uh, each one of the 55s, those are not S's, they're 55, such so a 55 gallon drum, you can set 55 gallon drums the whole length, you can plumb them in if you want, and that also will give you a nice support bed. And you'll also notice it up here in the center, I've got a fan drawn in, so if these windows are not adequate, and those windows would need a good insulative stop in the winter time, so I take some of that two inch foam and cut it, so when I was in the winter time, I'd just stick that two inch foam in those windows, and block them completely off so it wasn't getting any heat loss and block that fan off. So, and you can see these poles here represent my support. They're gonna be supporting the knee wall, giving me the support I need to hold my structure up. And of course, you see my stove dead center here, which would be distributing the heat, All right? So, in a, <clears throat> one of the other advantages of this little spot up here is it gives you a good spot for light. So, right up in here is where you'd wanna put you a metal halide lamp or a low pressure sodium lamp in order to uh, grow your plants in the winter time. Now, the big advantage of this greenhouse, you know, a normal hoop house will extend your growing season two months in the spring and two months in the, in the fall. But a, a hoop house is not really designed to heat and to light year round. This is more of a year round blooming 
not just green but actually blooming stuff you could put lights in this and bloom this this is going to require a lot less BTUs per square foot because of the limited glazing which was the limited area with a low R value so I just wanted to go over that real quick I don't know if it helps I'm not saying this is the best greenhouse it can be built I'm saying this is a greenhouse option and thank you for watching